Today we're going to be sharing and looking at Luke chapter 2, and we're going to be talking about waiting on the Lord. Now, waiting is not something that I like to do. Anybody here like to wait? Can I get a show of hands? Jennifer, you like waiting? I can tell you really like that. Her husband just <laughs> fell off. He helped Scott back up, would you? Uh, <clears throat> waiting on the Lord. When I was in the third grade, my third grade teacher, Ms. Mountjoy, who is still a good friend, and she was a beautiful lady. In fact, I was a third grade little boy that had a crush on his third grade teacher. And she was a really pretty lady and still is today. But Ms. Mountjoy used to paddle me. I know y'all are all shocked and, uh, that I would ever do that. I got paddlings in the third grade, fourth grade. I don't remember the fifth grade. Ms. Mumford didn't paddle sixth grade paddlings again. And then after that, and, but you say, well, you must have been a terrible child. No, in those days, all the boys got paddlings. If you spoke without raising your hand, paddling. Pow, pow, pow. No big deal. Get your paddling. Go sit down. You were fine. You know, just showed she loved you. And uh, she loved me a lot. <laughs> she must have. But in the third grade, Ms. Mountjoy had us memorize Luke chapter 2. We did that. We started in the fall and memorized the whole chapter. Luke chapter 2. Can you imagine doing that today? You know why we did that? Because it's true. And she wanted us to know the truth. And she didn't beat around the bush. And to this day, she still wants people to know the truth. Well, we're going to see that good things come to those who wait. In Psalm 5, verse 3, In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. Psalm 33, 20, Our soul waits for the Lord. And that word is Yahweh, who is the second person of the Godhead, Jesus. He claimed to be, I am. Our soul waits for I am, who is our help and our shield. Psalm 37, 34, wait on the Lord, wait on Yahweh, and keep His way, and He shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. Psalm 38, 15, I will wait for you, O Lord. <coughs> You will answer, O Lord, my God. Psalm, I'm sorry, Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord, and that word wait, you know what that word means? It doesn't mean sit down and just, okay, I'm waiting. You know what that word is? Wait. That word is expect. Those who expect on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isn't that a great verse? Well, Luke 2 tells the story. It tells of those who were in the process of waiting on the Lord and how they were blessed by God while they were waiting. Well, I think that there's some things that we do that the angels, I'm sorry, that the shepherds did while they were waiting on the Lord. They prayed, they watched. They shared. In other words, they were who they are. You say, well, what were, where were the shepherds? Who are they? Well, they were people that God loves, just like you, just like me. Nothing special. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 8, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. This morning, I was reading in a passage that there was one particular verse that really caused me trouble. Not that I didn't believe it, I just don't understand it fully. And you say, well, you're a preacher, been one a long time. There are things you don't understand. Listen, they've written books about what I don't understand. And the books are getting bigger and thicker. There's so much. Used to, I understood everything, or at least I thought I did, but now I don't. But the bottom line is, I was asking the Lord, saying, Lord, I just don't understand this. And He says, well, just do you know who I am? Yes, sir. Do you know who I am? Yeah. Do you know what I am? Yeah. I think. You're God who loves me. He said, that's who I am. If what you think you see goes contrary to that, you don't understand. So what do you do? You wait. You wait until I reveal the truth to you. You see, today it's instant everything, popcorn. You know, we put it in the microwave. We don't even want to wait uh, beyond a, a minute and a half for popcorn. Oh, man, that microwave's slow. Remember the old days when you put it on the pot and 
waited for it to heat up. I saw a thing the other day. It was called a redneck fire detector thing. You know what it was? It was a can of, or a pan of Jiffy Pop hanging in the corner. If it gets hot enough for the Jiffy Pop to go, you know, it's time to get out. <clears throat> you ought to be old enough to understand that joke. <clears throat> okay. Well, in Luke chapter 2, the angels, ready, had been waiting since they were created till the fullness of time was finished. Let's go to Luke chapter 2. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone was on his way to register for the census each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee from the city of Nazareth to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family of David. Now let me say this. In the Bible it says they go up to Jerusalem. Well, in truth, Galilee was way up here, and Jerusalem was way down here. So you physically go south to go to Jerusalem. But in the Bible, Jerusalem is always the epitome. So every place that you're going to Jerusalem, no matter what direction you were traveling, they would say they go up. To Jerusalem. Okay, just thought I'd share that. It says in verse 5, In order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Verse 8, In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields keeping watch over their their flock by night. Now let me stop here. In Bethlehem, I've been to the church that was built over the cave that Mary and Joseph were when the Christ child was born. It's the oldest known standing church in the world. It was built in around 300 AD and it still exists. It was built by Constantine's either mother or mother-in-law. He had decreed that his country, his, his empire would be a Christian empire. You don't do that by decree, but he did. And to this day, there's still some, there's a hill that kind of goes down in a little valley that has grass on it. And to this day, in the midst of the town of Bethlehem, you can still see sheep and shepherds out there. Not much has changed, but there they were. There they were. Okay. In the same region, there were some shepherds, verse 8 staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And, verse 9, an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news. Folks, the good news. The first mention by name of the word, which is the, we get our word good news from. By the way, it's the same word used for gospel. I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. Now, look at that. All the people. I don't understand a lot, but I do understand this good news of great joy is for all the people. For today, in this, in this city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This is the incarnation. This is when Christ, who is I am, who is Yahweh, who is fully God, stepped into time and became not just a man, but became man. Literally, He was to become sin, not just take your sin on Himself, but He became sin so that we might become His righteousness. Okay, verse 12. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Now, wait a minute. Peace among men with whom he's pleased? These were the rebellious men God-haters, we might say, that He's pleased. Well, let's go back to the shepherds in verse 8 and 9. The shepherds. 
an angel of the Lord appeared to them, it says, while they were staying in their fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. An angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone, round to them, shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. These shepherds were not doing anything out of the ordinary. They were just there. They were just being who they were. But let me tell you what they were. They were people that were in the right place at the right time. God has a way of working things out in your life. You lost a job in Fitzgerald. You took a job at a bank so you could meet your Prince Charming. <laughs> <clears throat> Would that be the right place at the right time? Okay. I can go on with many of you. You were working at a, see if I remember, veterinarian's office, and there was a dog food salesman that came around. <laughs> Darwin, I'm not going to ask her, I'll ask you. <laughs> was that the right place at the right time? I think so. And all of us have got a story like that. I went to a birthday party, and there was a little girl there that had her hair pulled back, and I liked her ears. <laughs> right place at the right time. We've all got stories like that. But folks, these guys were just watching their sheep. By the way, Jesus is called the Good Shepherd. Well, here they are. In verse 16, let's read verse 16. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in a manger. Well, let me talk about this a minute. The angels stepped down into eternity before this happened. I'm sorry, stepped down out of eternity into time. Now, can you imagine, from creation, the angels had been waiting on this day. The angels, is that them? Is that who it is? Is that who it is that you're going to become? You're going to become man? Wow. Here's what the angels thought. Man must be so extraordinary. Man must be so special that the God of creation would become one because He loved them. And then the one angel and angel of the Lord. And we don't know who it was. We think we know, maybe. Maybe it was Michael. Maybe it was Gabriel. We don't know. But all of a sudden, this myriad of angels, you couldn't even measure them. There were so many, they couldn't hold back anymore. And they stepped out of eternity into time and began to sing and, and praise the glory of the Lord. Because they knew Him for who He was. Glorious. Well, this would have an impact on me. Do you think it had an impact on these shepherds? I think so. In verse 16, in another translation other than New American Standard, and I like the way it says this, so I'm going to read this. And they came with haste and found Mary, Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. They came with haste. Now let me say this. You can go in haste and do whatever it is you're trying to do. But unless God reveals to you His plan, His way and truth to you, your haste is worthless. He's not telling us to go in haste or to go quickly about everything. He tells us to go in haste and go qu quickly about what He tells us. When He tells us, we move. Now what if the angels, I'm sorry, what if the shepherds had said, you know, let's go find Him. And before they were told where to go, they could have spent all this time looking for the Christ child, and they would have never found him. And they would have had to possibly go back to where they started. And I'm afraid that's what we do much of the time. Well, the angel of the Lord, or an angel of the Lord, uh, spoke to them, and then the others couldn't hold back anymore, and then they jumped in and began to praise God. Well, had the shepherds been in too much haste, they would have been looking in the wrong place for Christ. They would have had to backtrack. Had they set out on their own, they would have not been where Jesus was. Now, let me say this. Do you know the perfect place to hear from Jesus for you and for me is wherever you are? Sometimes we get the idea God wants us to do something someplace rather than to know we are someone where we are. I have a list. I'm always scared of a list, but this one I think is okay. And this is still true today. And there are five little things here that I wrote down. 
The first thing they did is they waited on God. First thing. That's the first thing we're to do. And then they went to the Lord Jesus where He was. Well, wherever you are is where He is. And then thirdly, they made known what had been told to them and what they found. They told people this. Fourth thing that happened, the people that they told this to marveled. And the fifth thing, and it's kind of hard to separate all these things, is that the shepherds glorified and praised God. Always the result of being with Jesus is glorifying and praise, praising God. Well, jumping down to verse 25, we're going to see the story of Simeon. Let me read verse 25 to you. And there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to carry out for him the customs of the law, then he took him in his arms and blessed God and said, Now, Lord, you are releasing your bondservant to depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. We see Simeon described right here. The King James says he was just and devout. New American Standard says he was righteous and devout. And righteous means just. And you know what? Some years ago, I said, he was righteous because he had believed. <clears throat> Sounds great, doesn't it? It's just not right. You know why he was righteous? Because God said he was. Because God said He was just. Why was He just? Because Christ had made a way. Because Christ had become man. Because Christ had become sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. His righteousness had nothing to do with what He had or hadn't done. Okay. The Bible says that He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And I think, why didn't it say what it means? But it does. What is the consolation of Israel? Well, we have the idea, a consolation prize. What do you do, Johnny, when you win a consolation prize? Okay, but I was thinking, what is a consolation prize? You put your head down and walk away ashamed because that means you're lost. That's what we think, but that's not it at all. That's not that. This means comfort. This means exhortation. This means entreaty. Jesus is the comfort of of Israel. Jesus is the entreaty of Israel. There can be no comfort without salvation. Jesus is the salvation of Israel. In verse 26, it said it had been revealed to him that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. So what did he do? He waited for year after year after year after year after year until he was old. And then one day, one day, this young couple brought this baby boy in to be circumcised, to be done to what they do at the right time. And the Lord said, that's him. That's him. All the years of waiting were gone. And all of a sudden, Christ, the Savior of all the people. Wow. He was waiting expectantly. He believed God. Listen, you know what the word faith? Believing God for what you have not seen. He had never seen physically what God had showed him in his mind and heart. Neither have we. But we still believe. We've never seen Christ. We were talking about it. I was up at... Uh, my friend uh, Betty Whitehead's and David Whitehead's house this weekend, this week, and and uh, I was talking to his son David Coleman Whitehead's son David, and we talked about it again. And David still to this day talks about it, how his dad before he died, the last words he said on this earth, he says, "I saw him, and I felt him, and he was much sweeter 
and much more gracious than we could ever imagine. Those were the last words out of his mouth. He came out of a coma to say those words, and then he was gone. Well, that's pretty cool. Pretty good last words. He saw him, and he felt him. Well, I think this guy felt the same way. He was led by the Spirit into the temple. Must not only wait, but we must be led by the Spirit. As you're waiting, God will, one day He'll say, okay, today's the day. Get up. Move where I tell you. Now, Simeon believed God, not when he saw the Christ. He believed God when he told him, however many years that was. Well, I have a question, another question. What is it that God is telling you to wait on? You say, Lord, I don't even know what you're telling me to wait on. That's okay. Wait till he tells you what to wait on. Then once he's told you what to wait on, wait and see that this will happen. Not that it could happen one day, but that it will happen. What is it that God's placed on your heart? You know, we were talking about it a little while earlier. What is it that God has placed on your heart? Some things that are heavy on your heart. Wait. Just wait and see what God's going to do. In verse 29 through 32, he said, My eyes have seen your salvation. Simeon believed God before he saw Him, and he believed God when he saw Him. And he's praising the Lord. He said that there's going to be a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles, the glory of your people, Israel. Well, Jesus is the glory of Israel. But He's going to be a revelation to the Gentiles. Now, this is something that God has shown me. Jesus is the glory period. But, ready for this? You are glory to Jesus. You see, He's glory to us, but we're glory to Him. He glories in us. I don't understand that, but what a great thing. And He says in verse 34, a child will be responsible. Let me read verse 34, just all of it. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and the rise of many in Israel, for a sign to be opposed. And a sword will pierce even your own soul to the end that your, that your thoughts uh, from many hearts may be revealed. He's going to be a fall for some. I don't understand all that. And a rise for many. There are going to be those that are going to fall because they will not believe what they see. You know, Simeon believed in what he hadn't seen. But there are those that have seen and will not believe. I don't understand that. Why would anybody? But it happens. A fall and a rise for many, not just in Israel. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. He is the light. Many people, there are some that are going to trust Him and some that are going to reject Him. Some people think that all eventually will trust Him. I don't see that. I would love to see that, but I don't. But Simeon saw the one who had, that he was going to do all that he said he was going to do, and Simeon was the one who waited his whole life, and now he sees. In verse 33, he said, and going back, his father and mother were amazed at the things which were being said about him. Understand, Mary was visited by an angel before this child was born. Can you imagine? She knew she'd never been with a man. She knew that she was a virgin, and yet, waiting those nine months, now she's hearing things that amazed her. Why would it amaze her? The angel had already told her these things were so. But she was amazed. Last person we're going to look at, verse 36, Anna. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of Asher, she was advanced in years and had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. And then as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple, serving night and day with fasting and prayers. At that very moment, she came up and, begin, and began giving thanks to God and continued to speak of Him to all those who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Here's Anna, a prophetess. She was of great age. She was 84. She'd lived with her husband for seven years. Now, a little math right here. 
If somebody had been married in that day and time, they were married as teenagers, and she had, she had lived with him for seven years. So she was very young when she was a widow. And all these years, 60-something years, and uh, she was alone, serving the Lord, since maybe her teens or early teens. And the Bible says in verse 37 that uh, she never left the temple, serving night and day with fastings and prayers. Night and day. Well, this was a mindset for her rather than a vocation. She wasn't staying in the temple doing all that she was doing because she was assigned to the temple. It was because of who she was. She saw what she had been shown in her heart in prophecies because she was a prophetess. But when she saw Jesus, she knew who He was. Verse 38, Luke, 6, uh, Luke 2, 38. At that very moment, she came up and began giving thanks to God and continued to speak to Him, speak of Him to all those who were looking for the redemption of his, uh, uh, Jerusalem. Can you imagine? This is the one. This is the redemption of Jerusalem. She couldn't hold back. She'd been waiting maybe for over 60 years, waiting all that time, serving night and day as who she was. And now she saw him. She gave thanks to the Lord, and she spoke of him, of him to all who looked for the redemption of Israel. Okay, wait. Maybe the hardest word that any of you could ever deal with. Wait. It's hard. Wait. The reason we can wait is because we know that he loves us. The reason the people have a hard time waiting about whatever is because they don't fully understand how much Jesus loves them. Because we want it now. It's the American way. Now! We want it now. It's not just the American way. It's the way of the flesh. We want what we want now. But it says that to wait for Him to reveal the redemption of Israel, the consolation of Israel. Well, we're to wait for Him to reveal to us who He is and who we are in Him as we fully understand these things, and I'm not saying that I do. There's some things, I got another list. We wait, we worship, and we wonder at Him and what He will do. Because you know, whatever He does for us or through us is for our own good, because He loves us. Always leads, ready for this, to more than we expected. I was talking to somebody up in Athens this past week and when I go up there, I don't go up much anymore since my mother's moved down to South Georgia. Athens, Georgia's where the, some people think the Lord lives. Uh, it's where the University of Georgia's located for all you bulldog haters out there but, uh, or lovers, whichever. But, uh, but anyway, I went back home. That's where I'm from. I was talking to some people. And I was, you know, now I'm old. Not as old as my friend, but old. I had to put that in there. But here's the thing. Would you have ever guessed that me would have the privilege of traveling around the world and telling people about the Savior who loves them? And you, you say, well, my business is successful, or I'm doing this, or I'm doing this, or I'm retired. None of that's who we are. Who we are is the one that God has revealed Himself to us. And that our life's ambition is to know Him and to share with others so that they can know Him. And who would have ever thought that God would reveal these things to me and then let me share it with others? That's what God has done. And this will change the way we see everything and everybody. When you look at somebody and you think, what a mess. I have one word. Wait. Think of who you were before you knew. Now, you already were, but think of who you thought you were before you knew. I think of myself when I was 22. That's a long time ago. When I was laying in my bed one night, didn't understand much, and, and I just cried out to the Lord. And He answered me. Boom! Just like that. And from one moment to the next, I knew how much Jesus loved me. And I was overcome by His love. 
fact, so much so that I wrote a book called Overcome by the Love of God, Overcome by Love. Now, as God reveals these things to you, it changes you and it changes everyone around you. Well, if He did that in your life, just wait. How many more people are there like that in the world? Well, Christmas is a great time of the year. It's one of my favorite times of the year. I can tell you this, He wasn't born. Christ wasn't born on December 25th. We know that. And some people say, well, I don't separate, I celebrate because it's a heathen holiday. And it was. It was a heathen holiday before this particular date. Don't let the devil steal from you what, what God has said is okay to celebrate. Go ahead and celebrate. And God gives us an opportunity to tell people Merry Christmas. You know what that means? Happy Christ Mass. Happy Celebration of Christ. That's what that means. And you can celebrate with others around the world. It's the one time of the year that we can say we're happy because Christ was born. We're happy in celebrating the birth of the consolation of Israel. Take advantage of it. Well, I don't have anything else for you this time. And we'll see you next time.